Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have a 2020 Chevy Colorado 3.6 with a P0018 or P0019. Uh, the light came on for the customer while they were on a 1500 mile trip. It came into the shop a couple weeks ago for an oil change. We scheduled them for diagnostic. Um, at one point the codes were cleared, so I can't remember which code it was. I'll see if I can pull up a history of, of which code was we're having issues with. Because it's such an intermittent code, I don't think that we're going to be able to duplicate it because the customer's been driving it for two weeks and the light hasn't come back on since his trip. It might be something that only happens after driving the vehicle for a really long time. Maybe it's just on the threshold of code setting criteria and right now it's right below it. On the trip it rose right above it. Um, I don't really know. But what I wanna do is we'll do a full code scan on this vehicle, just to make sure that you know nothing has come back. And already I see no engine codes, but we'll let this go through, uh, run everything else. And then I think what we're gonna do is we are going to, we're gonna go drive the vehicle and we're gonna monitor the variable valve timing. And I'm hoping that we can see a cam that is maybe lagging behind the other cams. Now this engine is a newer designed 3.6 liter engine. It's not the same 3.6 that we've seen for, for several years since 2007 or eight, when they first started coming out in the Impalas and the Acadias. Um, this is a redesigned motor um, and it is actually a, a lot different from the, from the old design. Yeah, I don't see anything major on the code scan. We're just gonna go back and we're gonna go into our engine. Go to data display. Because this engine is a different design engine, you know, the, the common repair data isn't available. You know, if we jump on Identifix, it's not gonna have a whole lot of information. Being that this is a 2020, it's only been out for a couple of years. I think they use this engine a few years newer in the Camaro, but 2020 might've been the first year for it in the Colorado. So looking at our list, we have a lot of data pits to choose from. Um, this is just breaking it down into subcategory for us. So we're gonna look for variable valve timing data, which I see cam actuator data, CMP actuator data. So that's probably gonna contain all the information we need for for our test drive. So we have exhaust cam position bank one, bank two, intake bank one and bank two. Now what I want to do is, there we go, further down. I'm gonna narrow this list down just so we don't have as much stuff. Uh, maybe we want all, the, we might want all this stuff just in case a, a fault happens. Um, it won't refresh quite as fast. We'll narrow it down to begin with, and if we need more data, we'll add more stuff back in. So let's go to custom data list. I'm gonna deselect everything. Well, I'm gonna include the percentage. This is like the, the duty cycle of the solenoid. And this also has four solenoids per head. Um, I think it has a deactivation solenoid on each head. Maybe it goes into four cylinder mode. And then it also has a intake camshaft position actuator park lock solenoid. So it has another solenoid that somehow locks the cam. And I don't know if it does that before shutdown. Um, I haven't read through all the service information on this. I just you know, took a quick glance at it when it was in here for the oil change and told them let's reschedule because I wanted to take a, a deeper look into it. So let's get our desired and our actuals and our variance. So this could be very similar to the trailblazer of mine where we, we noticed our biggest deviations in the variance pids. Because that's where we're gonna, we're gonna see these camshafts drift from what the the ECM or PCM is commanding. And I'm gonna jump into a graph view.
maybe thinking about it. So this is still a lot of <laughs> a lot of data pits to watch. So we may want to switch this up and only graph our variants. Oh, here we go. I, I like this view a little bit better. So everything's still in a graph, but our picture is a little bit bigger so we can actually see some stuff going on here. And luckily at the top of our list is our variance PIDs. So here's what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll fire this thing up and we'll make sure that our variance is still at zero sitting here in the shop. And then I want to jump out and go drive it right away to find out if this thing, you know, changes whether it's cold or hot. Now I do remember looking at the freeze frame data while it was in here and it had set the code once while it was cold and it set the code once while it was hot. And it's possible that it was just dirty oil and then the problem has resolved itself because we did change the oil a couple of weeks ago. And when we change oil on these, we always use the Dexos approved oil. Um, so I know that it's not the, uh, not the oil that we're using causing the issue. So looking at this, it has not commanded, or did it command? Did we just see a, a little glitch already? So I, I saw a, a variance count on both intake camshafts, but I'm pretty sure the code that we were after was an exhaust cam. We just throw it in gear and give it a little power break. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we, uh, we actually had some movement and everything. It was actually running rough there for a second just now. And I can see that our bank two camshaft position on the exhaust, uh, that variance went, went up quite a bit. Now what I'm not sure about is the desired exhaust camshaft position bank one and two stayed at zero, but our solenoid command went up on both banks. So that doesn't really make sense. Um, and one bank went higher than the other. Did we set a fault code already? And now it's not reporting us uh, good information? Let's go back, let's just double check codes. I'll shut the hood, we'll take it for a test drive and data log. Okay, so it, if we actually managed to get it to set the code on first startup, it just amazes me that the customers had it for, for two weeks and, uh, and the code hasn't set and now it just set, <clears throat> just power breaking it in the shop. So P0019, crankshaft position, exhaust camshaft position, not plausible, bank two. So basically it's not saying that it's over advanced or over retarded. It's just saying that the position of the camshaft isn't plausible or it doesn't like where the camshaft's at based on the command. So it's, it's not staying where it's commanded. So bank two exhaust, just like we saw in our data, that variance jumped up on that exhaust camshaft. So we're gonna go back to see if our custom list will pop, populate real quick and We'll actually just go for a quick test drive. Um, it's still dark outside, so you guys won't be able to see much of me while we're driving, but I'm sure you're okay with that. Now, this is one of the few times that I wish that we could group data pits in the same graph. Um, I find that kind of annoying sometimes on the other scan tools, but here's where it could be helpful. If we could stack our our camshaft position graphs on top of each other, then we can see if one side is deviating from the other. But we'll go take this thing for a drive and see what happens.
So what we're really gonna be focused on is that variance PID. That's where we're gonna still see the most useful information, at least at a glance, of the camshaft not responding the way it's supposed to. And at 5 a.m., the, the roads are clear, and there's no traffic, so we have a little more freedom to, to drive, accelerate, slow back down, accelerate, slow down. So I'm gonna decelerate, because that's when I noticed it in the shop, is when I let off of the pedal. That's when we got a spike in that variance. And of course, I'm not seeing that much variance compared to what we had in the shop earlier. I mean, it spiked over 20 degrees earlier. Now, I am also seeing that it's not really commanding anything, so. I don't remember if I cycled the key or shut the truck off since the code set. So we're gonna pull over and we are going to shut the truck off. We're gonna restart the truck and then continue our test drive. Okay, we'll continue on and we'll see if we actually get any updates. If not, then I think we'll, uh, we might grab the factory tool just so we can graph these PIDs all in one go. I should be able to get this exhaust camshaft position to, to change pretty rapidly on a test drive. I mean, if it's gonna change on uh, just power braking it in the shop, then it should change while we're test driving. Yeah, I don't know. Something's going on. Um, we'll just grab another scan tool. Sometimes it's just better to verify that you have uh, accurate information because we are getting a command at the solenoids, but our desired and our actual data pads are staying at zero. So this will be a little bit different than what you guys normally see. We're gonna jump into the GDS2 software. This is the, the OEM software from GM. Now this is available to everyone in the public if you wanna pay for it. Okay, so we're gonna, we're not gonna have access to any of the programming features in our in standalone mode here, uh, but we can go into diagnostics. We're using my Cardac M as an interface. We're gonna to go to module diagnostics. Now, if I was doing a full system scan, I'd just go to system diagnostic or vehicle, but we're gonna to go to module, we're gonna to go to engine. Make sure we don't have any code set. So we have no code set since we cleared them last time. Let's go back again. And we are gonna to go to data. We're gonna pick a data list. And then we will take it for another spin around the block and hopefully uh, get some, some useful full data. So I'm gonna pick some stuff that I want to graph. I believe to do that, we have to pick some data pads and lock them. So sorry, the, the font's kind of small. I have it turned down so I can see more stuff on the screen. So I want our actual positions. So this guy here, we're gonna lock that. Desired, I think we'll go to the bottom. 
start at the bottom, we'll lock it, should move up, yep. So we're gonna look at intake and exhaust, just, just so we can see both of them at once. And let's start by graphing that. Now, I'm not gonna be looking at the variance in this, in this graph. What I wanna see is if one is, you know, changing different from the rest of them. So, so here we have a, a line graph where all of our data pits are stacked. Now, our intake and exhaust are not going to respond the same as each other. They're gonna be on different ratios, but our bank one and bank two exhaust should be the same. Our bank one and bank two intake should be the same. So now that we have that set up, let's go drive this around the block and see if we can you know, see a, a repeatable variance uh, I know we're not looking at the variance PID, but to see if one's taking longer to open or one's taking longer to close. Okay, so now we're getting actual da data of our camshaft position. And it gives us that flat line in the background just so we can you know, compare data to. So we're watching our, our intake and exhaust, and we can see that they do fluctuate or deviate from each other a little bit. Uh, mostly those top two lines, we don't see those following each other the whole time. And I'll have to pull over to be able to actually read you know, the font of what those two lines indicate, but I'm guessing that those are the exhaust pits. So we'll pull over here again and I'll, I'll just verify because I am seeing one of those lines that is much slower to respond than the other, or at least it lags behind on mostly the command to close, a little bit on the command to, to open or advance and retard. So our exhaust is going to be the blue line and the red line. So blue and red is our exhaust, green and yellow is the intake. And red is gonna be our bank two exhaust and that's the one that set the code. And the red one is the one that is lagging slightly behind the other one. see it lagging behind when it's commanded to advance and actually I don't know if that's it commanded advance or retard it doesn't doesn't tell me <laughs> when the command goes higher it lags behind when the command drops it lags behind if we look at our intake pids down below they match almost identically but our exhaust does not so that that's telling me that we have a sticky component in the exhaust. So whether the actuator is sticky or the, the solenoid, uh, when I say actuator, I mean the phaser on the, on the cam, the cam gear. It could be, you know, sticky, but I normally don't see that. What I normally see is whenever we have an issue with the cam phaser, it either rattles on startup or it has sludge build up inside of it and it can't go to the full advance or the full retard position. We are seeing this lag behind on you know, even incremental changes, small changes, not at the full travel. So I'm pretty sure that we just have a solenoid issue. Now, which that, that reminds me, um, you know, we had the same issue with the trailblazer. I don't think an oil change or flush would have fixed it. Um, we had to replace that solenoid. This truck has already received a fresh oil change and filter, and it still has an issue. Okay, so we're back in the shop, and I just wanna confirm if we can get this thing to act up by power breaking it.
and we can. We can see it just as drastically as when we were test driving it. See, on that time, that time it worked perfect. So it's not every time that it lags behind. So I guess it is a little more uh, noticeable on the test drive. Now I think we're gonna, we're gonna throw a solenoid in it. Now you could swap the solenoids from one location to another and make sure that the, you could flip flop, I guess the exhaust solenoids and see if it switches from one bank to the other, the code or the data on the scan tool. But sometimes they're not the easiest to get to. Now let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Let's see where the bank two, did I not shut this off? Uh, let's see where the bank two exhaust solenoid is and see if we can you know, swap that out or change it out with a new one. I do have a new solenoid here. Um, when we called just to, to check on parts, they were on back order. So we, we ordered one anyways, and uh, it showed up a couple of days ago. So when we called, they, they said that they had like 36 on order and uh, they didn't know when they'd get them in. So that tells me that they're having an issue with these solenoids. Now, what's weird is I couldn't find any information searching this code on the internet. That just, there was nothing out there. So I don't know if this is just not a common issue or if it's still new enough that it's they're going back to the dealership and the dealership's taking care of them. This one is under factory warranty, but the customer does not want to deal with our dealership. Uh, so we're going to take care of it here. Okay, so let's jump into Pro Demand. Log in. And let's take a look at you know, where these actuators are and what it takes to change them. Because the labor guide showed uh, like three and a half hours for the bank two solenoids. So we have a 2020 Chevrolet Colorado with a 3.6. Um, this has the off-road suspension. Was that a ER, ZR2? I don't know, it's got these gigantic shocks and I think like a factory two inch lift kit. So we're just gonna, let's just punch in the code. We had a 0019. That should give us some more information. We should probably <laughs> look at the code setting criteria and uh, you know, see what happens there, what's supposed to happen. Uh, we know that that one side's delayed. Component operation description. So very, very small condition for setting the code. Deviation of the relative camshaft position is greater than nine degrees in one direction, or negative nine in one direction, or greater than positive nine in the other direction, measured in degrees of the crankshaft. So it's, it's comparing the cam to the crank, and it sees nine degrees of deviation at the crank compared to the camshaft where it's actually supposed to be. So we, when we set the code, we had power braked it, and we saw over 20 degrees of variation. So not a lot of information there. Um, actuator system description. So it says ECM can change the timing of all four camshafts. Let's see, let's see if it'll show us where they're at. Uh, it does give us some information on that park lock operation, but we don't have a fault with that. So we're gonna go on back here and see if it'll give us a replacement procedure. We don't need the camshaft position sensor. That's not what we're looking for. I think that's all it's gonna give us here. Just punch in VVT solenoid. That will normally do the trick and give us the uh, R and R procedure we're looking for. So camshaft position actuator, position actuator valve solenoid replacement. Bank two, which is the left side of the engine, exhaust. Let's click on that one. So it shows it being mounted right up front. So it says we have to remove the intake. So not a quick, easy 
let's just swap some solenoids around. But let's, uh, let's get this engine cover off and see if we can actually see what's happening with this engine. See if it's something that, you know, sometimes there's, there's ways around the factory procedure. Take our oil cap off and see if this whole thing will pop off. Oh no. There's more holding this thing on. It must be part of the air chamber. Oh yeah, we got a screw straight down this hole here. We have an air tube here and here. I'm not sure if it's all attached. Looks like it. So we got a few things to pull off and we have another screw over here. So let's get those out. I lost my, uh, my 810 flip socket the other day. It rolled off the back of the engine and I spent about 10 minutes looking for it and decided I didn't have time to, to wait any longer. So it may have bounced out on the road by now, but either way, it's no longer mine. I guess the 810 flip wouldn't have helped me because GM decided to change their hose clamps from a eight millimeter, five sixteenths to a, to a seven. That was loose. Got a hose under here. Am I missing a bolt? We're missing a bolt. There we go. Now we can see some stuff. Okay, just glancing in here. See two solenoids underneath the throttle body on this bank two solenoids on this bank. So those are gonna be what we're looking for. Actually, it kinda of looks like they're leaking oil. There's some oily residue. I don't know if that's coming out the top of the solenoid or leaking, you know, just around the valve cover. Um, you know, it almost looks like we can pull the valve cover off, or not the valve cover, the, uh, the throttle body off and get that solenoid out. If we can, that'll be great. Instead of pulling the whole intake manifold, I mean, the intake doesn't look bad to pull, but why do more work than we have to? So I'm just gonna zip that throttle body off and see if that will get us where we need to be to get that solenoid out. Yeah, not looking good for the home team. Um, there's just not quite enough clearance. So I think we are gonna have to pull the intake, which means I'm not gonna play the, uh, you know, swap them from one spot to another game. Um, it's just too, too much work. So let's go ahead and just loosen up this intake. I think if we just loosen it up, we can, we can get to everything we need to. Uh, I see one one bolt down here and nothing on this other side and the rest of them are going to be down this down the center. Don't want to lose that anywhere. Okay, it's retained. Um, so that bolt's taken care of. Now we just got to get the uh, the bolts down the center. Um, there are some down in these holes, but they're 13s. So uh, socket and extension or the long extra deep sockets will be our friend here.
So for that back one, I'm going to try uh, about the same length. I might have to go with a short extension with the wobble on it because I have to get it down in the intake between the cowl and the intake so I don't have a lot of room. Even though this, this thing has low miles, someone's been in here before us. Got a three eighths a quarter inch uh, reducer there. And it's an off brand. So I'm not sure what, where that came from or, or who was doing what with it. I think most of the labor involved in the labor guide is getting this one bolt out. Now it looks like there's a big, big bracket in the back going over all the fuel lines. But what I'm wondering is if we can just, now that we have those bolts loose, can we just pick this up enough to get that solenoid out of there? Or do we actually have to take all this other stuff loose? Maybe if we just take those bolts loose going into that bracket, if we can get in there, we can get enough play out of this thing to get this intake off. I don't know if that'll give us enough room or not, but we'll uh, go ahead and take the bolt out of this solenoid. Let's unplug it first. Take the bolt out of there and see if we can lift up on the solenoid. Or lift up on the intake to get that solenoid out. Come on. It's like every week somebody has to design a new type of connector. Okay. There's a solenoid. Ow, it's hot. So let's go ahead and just install our new one. Um, put everything back together. Take it for a drive and see if our problem is solved. I have a feeling that we're gonna start seeing more and more of these go bad. Um, so I am glad that we can do it without entire intake removal. We just have to unbolt it and kind of lift it up a little bit. Now I went ahead and put some assembly lube on the new solenoid. Put a bolt back in there. Our wiring harness go disappeared on us. There we go. Get that guy plugged back in. Okay, now we just gotta bolt the intake back down. Hard part's gonna be that last bolt. So everything's put back together. Let's go ahead and reestablish communication with the vehicle. After having the J box unplugged, sometimes you have to start all over, but it looks like it's gonna connect for us. I'm gonna try doing the same thing that we did before and just power brake it. So before our red trace was falling behind. Now it's actually responding a little faster than our blue trace, which is the other exhaust cam. But it was matching fairly close you know, 
power breaking it in the shop when we came back in from our test drive. But on our test drive, it was showing quite a bit of variance or deviation between bank and bank. So let's go ahead and go for another test drive. We'll record data and just see what happens. So far, everything looks much better than it did before. Acceleration, deceleration events. We're seeing very minor differences from bank to bank. It's kind of weird, it like delays the update and it looks like we're gonna you know, have an issue lagging behind and then it lines them back up. Everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and take it back to the shop. So it looks like everything's working perfect now. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll just park it outside, let it sit three or four hours. Um, shouldn't get too warm today. It's about 20 degrees outside right now. And then uh, I'll drive it again and make sure that everything responds the same when it's cold. I better shut this door. But I think this we got this one fixed. I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot more of this in the future. It's going to become a regular repair, just like it was on, you know, the Ecotech motors. You know, we see those in here all the time. We replace, replace both the intake and exhaust solenoids. And these particular motors on the 3.6, we may, we may start seeing these so common or regularly that we'll just replace all four when one goes bad. But since we haven't seen that many issues with, the, with these in the past, or yet, uh, I think we have five or six customers that have these, minimum five or six customers that have these newer Colorados with this motor. And this is the first one we've seen with an issue. And we have customers that have, you know, 100,000 miles on them. So, you know, it's not something that I think we're gonna see a lot of, but you never know. They were on back order for a little bit. So that tells me that, you know, they are having some issues in the dealerships. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, suggestions on how you would diagnose it or what the issue is with these uh, solenoids. Um, I'd like to hear that as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.